This video is sponsored by Oru Kayak, the world's first origami kayak that go anywhere. Click the link in the description to order yours today. Hi, my name's Nathan, and this is my mobile studio camper wagon adventure bus. <laughs> I'm a professional graphic designer. That's what I studied, but I'm also a photographer. I specialize in photo manipulation and surrealism photography, and it's a very hands-on approach. There's a lot of prop building involved. Like I did this one photo where it looks like the lake has been drained by a, a giant plug. Each photo is its own you know, huge project. And then uh, with the bus, I'm able to drive to uh, very remote locations and still be able to create. Uh, when I found out my dad was having a kidney transplant, my sister and I both quit our jobs and moved back in with our parents to be there for support. I had nothing but time on my hands. I wasn't working for anybody. I had money saved and I and I kind of realized that this is a window of opportunity that I'll just, I'll never get again. So I, my dad's a lot healthier now. Uh, this past year has been amazing. I've, I've started my own business. Um, I, I built the bus and now I'm getting ready to start using it and uh, gonna be using it in British Columbia. The 2006 Ford E450 Super Duty has about 97,000 clicks on it. She runs really smooth. I really want to get one of those uh, tacky hood scoop things from Canadian Tire because it adds like 30 horsepower. So <laughs> it came white, which was great. And I don't really know what I want to paint it yet. So stay tuned for that. I did add a nice little black trim along the bottom. Um, it was just kind of hiding imperfections and I think it overall looks really good. Right, on the inside of this door, I put a little basketball net because uh, I think it's cool. Probably should have updated that, but <laughs> if you're ever doing something outside, I don't know, hosting some kind of event or want to get people's attention, it's a great way to do it. Keep some sports equipment in that little shelf there. You can, hey. I haven't really done too much with the exterior, but I do plan on putting a small roof deck on the top. Um, probably have a ladder of some kind right around here so you can climb up to the roof and enjoy the sunset. This is the kitchen area. Now, because I don't live in here full time, uh, my needs are a bit different. I don't have this sink installed just yet, but what I've used for that is just an old tin bucket and I'm gonna turn it into a sink. These are just little wooden crates. I bought a bunch of them and just stained them myself and I'm making uh, nice little drawers out of them. I built up this nice little half wall. It helps keep the bus a bit warmer and I'm also planning on hanging a bunch of the you know kitchen utensils. Uh, pans, stuff like that. Have these nice little cupboards up here, just additional storage. I got these at Habitat for Humanity. Bought those for a dollar each. They're like $80 doors at uh, Home Depot. Here is just where I keep most of my camera gear. Chalkboard paint over the cabinet doors. That locks as well. Okay, right now I have a two battery setup. I have a buddy of mine who's an electrician do all this stuff for me. And he ran me through the numbers, how much power I'm getting from my setup, right over my head. I did not understand a word. So I plug things in and they work. I really need to take time to learn all that stuff, but I have enough on my plate right now. I also have an inverter uh, tucked under here. It's 1500 watt, which I've been informed is not very much. So that's another thing I'm gonna have to upgrade. I got two uh, solar panels on the roof, about 100 watt each. It's not very much, but it's it works for what I need right now. I do plan on upgrading that. I have a Renogy uh, controller uh, on the side here that tells me how much power I have and uh, what's going on on the roof. <laughs> During the summer and spring, people are constantly doing landscaping in their backyard, getting rid of old fences, old decks, whatever. It's usually treated, it looks great, it's aged. Um, so a lot of the wood in this bus I got for free. All of the ceiling wood that you see here, it's all old cedar. The skeleton of the bus looked pretty cool. I completely took all the sheet metal out and I chopped up a bunch of old cedar from someone's deck, nice and thin, and I re-glued them back up there. I put a little bit of insulation in between. That gave me not only extra headroom, but it gave me a really cool aesthetic. And then I just ran over all the beams with a nice dark gray paint. I had some dents in the roof, so I actually built this part down and I just used a nice beige pine, screwed them right into the beams itself. You have a lot of these beige tones in the darker pieces of wood, so it kind of color echoes throughout the bus. I plan on putting a skylight or some kind of hatch that you can open up and, and climb through. I also plan on building a small deck on the roof so that you can climb up here and go onto the deck. 
I would say about 90% of this booth is made from wood that I got for free. So this part here was someone's deck that I just uh, I chopped up and made a table out of it. Uh, these were uh, fence posts from someone else's backyard. I put these little crates here. I keep all my tools in there. And then I just keep all my, my vacuum accessories there. This is a futon cushion that I trimmed off a little bit because it was too long, but this actually slides out into a decent sized bed, just like that. This is one of the work areas. Uh, a lot of the projects I do is very hands-on, so I just keep you know my various tapes and stuff like that. You'll notice I have a bunch of different crates along the shelves here, kind of working out where is the best spot to keep various things. So various uh, backdrops, towels, and linens in, in here. And I could just move this aside and slide the chair underneath here and it adds an extra little workspace. This is a desk I got off of Kijiji. It was only 10 bucks, super lightweight, um, and easy to kind of manipulate here. So, you know, sketching pencils, tape. When you're driving, this stuff goes flying everywhere. So just put those latches on. I just have props laying around everywhere. Like this is a, <laughs> this is a pin that I made, like a Google pin. So I did a few projects with that. Uh, this is another project that I'm working on. So I'm Photoshopping a giant ship into this bottle and I'm gonna make it look like, you know, this washed up on shore and like captain and his crew escaped essentially. So yeah, I have a bunch of random items in here that if you look at it, it doesn't really make sense, but it's probably for a, probably for an art project. I just bought chalkboard paint, it was like $30, and I got like this giant board and I custom cut it so that you can, you know, draw, you know, whatever you want on it. This is like a little work table that um, I put my computer here and I also have a little backdrop that I have hidden up at the top there. When you're doing product shoots, you don't actually need that much space, uh, especially if they're smaller objects. So when I'm working remotely, I still have the ability to shoot stuff like that. And it's a pretty long backdrop. It stretches out all the way if I, if I need. And this just rolls back up like that. Um, I keep various tripods and stuff up here. And probably my most recent and most favorite addition to the bus is this little projector system that I made. I built this little platform and this hangs. So the chains at the back are shorter and the chains at the front are longer just to give it a bit of a sloping angle. This is just blackout fabric that I bought for about 15 bucks. Um, it's perfect for projector screens. For some reason, screens are like $200. It just makes no sense. It's just fabric. So <laughs> put little eyelets in the corners there so that it can hang up. On the bottom here, I just put a tube, sewed a little pocket so that it just keeps it nice and straight and gives it some structure. Bought a bunch of rope for about 10, 15 bucks. Got a nice roll of it. Went a long way. As you can see, there's a bunch of curtain holders uh, made out of rope. In this case, they actually hold the rods up and divide the curtains from passing as well. I used rope to essentially create shelves in a way. I could just kind of hang stuff off here. I usually hang various fabrics and um, backdrops or whatever I need to hang off that. I thought of this idea in Home Depot that it would be cool to have columns or pillars in the bus. It's just so unnecessary, so Naturally, I, I had to have it. <laughs> I have them here. This was a part of someone's deck that I got for free. So nice aged wood there. And you can see in the kitchen, I used the same piece of wood. I just cut it up in different pieces. Massive pillars here, again, with the rope creating shelving out of essentially nothing. So yeah, completely unnecessary. So that's why I put them in. <laughs> I've been fortunate enough to find a bunch of really nice light fixtures like this at really dirt cheap prices. So I just kind of run the wire up along the beam so that it's nice and clean. And you got like this nice, really warm lighting that comes from it. So I have another matching one in the kitchen and then these match as well. These are all bought at discount and I love the warm light of it. It takes a little bit more energy, but I don't care, it looks good. <laughs> one thing that I learned in graphic design school was make sure something works before you make it look good. When I first started building, I did the exact opposite. <laughs> I, I went straight for the aesthetic. I made sure everything looked pretty and then I had to kind of dial it back. Certainly paid for it, but in the end, I'm really happy with the result. Uh, the biggest lesson I've learned, hands down, is patience. There's so many things I wanted to do so quickly, and that's when I started making mistakes, and I was actually moving further away from my goal. So just take your time and really 
um, map out the best way to do things and just you'll, you'll get there eventually, just, just stick with it. I, I like the saying that yesterday you said tomorrow. Um, that's something that I'm trying to live more and more by. Stop creating excuses for the things that you want to do and just they're a lot less scarier than you think. Once you get started, it's a lot easier to go for the things that you've always wanted to do. It's just buying the bus is the hardest step. We are anchored off of the home island of Odysseus, which is modern day Kefalonia in Greece, which is arguably Homer's Ithaca. Arriving under sail, as is the ancient Greek way, we cross the Ionian Sea from Andy Paxos after picking up our Oru kayaks in Corfu. These kayaks are the perfect addition to our adventure gear because they are incredibly lightweight and they pack down into a pack that fits on your back. These Oru kayaks allow us to explore closer to the exquisite coastline without the disrupting experience of a combustion engine from our fossil fuel burning dinghy. Oru kayaks are a pleasure to paddle and they have increased my exploration joy by at least five points. When you're sitting low in the water, silently ghosting along, observing the magnificence around you, a feeling of loving wonder is inevitable. Explore our home planet in an immersive, integrated way and enjoy the serenity. Use the link in the description to order your very own origami Oru kayak and get out there and explore.